Lord, we thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray. But go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depends on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together. Sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God. We pray. As we acknowledge the land this morning, let's begin right where we are. Let's ground in this space, in this moment. And so I invite you to pause, take a breath, to feel yourself anchored where you are. Feel your body, feel the force of gravity rooting you to this place, wherever you may be. And now notice the land itself and feel how it's supporting us. We can consider some of the ways that the land nourishes us. We recognize that this land has been home to indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They lived and thrived here long before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land itself. We're hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. The light of Christ shines like a star, calling us to peace and justice in no uncertain terms. As the Gospel writer Luke says, to whom much has been given, much will be required. And those of us born into privilege have a responsibility to stand with the oppressed, just as Jesus did. And in the face of systemic racism here in Canada and the many ways we perpetuate it, we are also called to listen and learn, to challenge and change the status quo, and to make space for others. May we be led by this light, even as we lead others to walk in the way of the peacemaker. And this light extends a spirit of welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us today. I am grateful that you are connected to this community that doesn't think the same or vote the same or love the same, but is trying our best to follow in the way of Jesus. We do this in the spirit of welcome, and your story is important here. May this be a time that together we can praise the Lord.
With those words of praise, we light our memorial lights honoring those that are on your hearts and minds at this time, those who have shared with you their gifts. And also today we light lights for those who have received the gifts. The light is for the building up of this community, and we are grateful for the cloud of witnesses that make space for us to hear God call our name. I have called you by your name, you are mine. I have gifted you and asked you now to shine. chosen you are mine I will help you learn my name as you go read it written in my people help them grow pour the water in my name speak the word your soul can claim offer Jesus body given Listen to the word of Scripture from chapter 4 of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. 
The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Christ goes ahead of us and we follow. The language we hear in Paul's letter is around the body of Christ. Christ being the head of the church and calling forth leaders to build and strengthen the body. To support the healthy equipping to grow in healing and in love. Before we dig into the next spiritual gift of leadership, let's pause. For when we hear the word leadership, we have so many examples of leaders in our world. I invite you to draw their images to mind. There are the ones that we're seeing most frequently on the news. But expand and think of the leaders in your own life the diversity of the ways they lead, the way one's faith is used as a strength or as a weapon in leadership, the vulnerability and the authenticity of how one can lead, those leaders we pray for, that their strengths will be awakened, their gifts will be noticed, and the intention to lead humbly bring those images of leadership to this time of exploring the scripture together. Let us pray. Holy One, we hear your ancient words in letter form written to a community to remind them who they are and whose they are. This morning, as we explore this spiritual gift of leadership, may we be reminded that the call is to build up the body of Christ. And between the words that are heard and the words that are said, may your word for this time be known. Amen. Leadership, the spiritual gift of leadership. People with this gift are able to lead effectively in 1 Timothy 3, verse 5, the Apostle Paul gives Timothy some common sense related to recruiting leaders. For if someone does not know how to manage their own household, how can they take care of God's church? God empowered leaders so that they would have the ability to elicit trust, to build trust within the community. Persons with the gift of leadership share the vision of God's shalom in ways that capture the imagination. They use their energy and skills for the good of the community. They set goals and communicate the desired way we're moving forward to others. They do that with a spark that invites people into the bigger journey. They do all of these things for the strengthening up of the community and the mending of the world. Leaders care for the spiritual well-being of the people they're in relationship with, of the persons who are entrusted to their care. 
Hebrews 13 verse 17 says that leaders are keeping watch over our health and will give an account. There's accountability built into the action of exercising the spiritual gift of leadership. It also says in Hebrews 13, let them do this with joy and not with sighing. Those with the gift create safe space for others to function and to use their unique spiritual gifts as part of the body. It is a gift of deed, an active gift. If you are controlling or domineering and have this compulsion to be a leader, this gift may not be what's called out of you. Some Bible translations use the word government to name the gift. These individuals with the gift of leadership are able to share information and power. They enable those around them to realize and accomplish their goals by lifting them up. They're good managers and administrators. Persons taking leadership roles equip the church, the Christian community, to work in ways that open us to sharing the good news. The church has recognized and been grateful for those who have discovered their spiritual gift of leadership at summer camp. We have a history and a legacy of leaders feeling a call and connecting that call in summer camp leadership experience to the wider work of the church. When I was a camp director, we used to have a couple of weeks each year called LIT Camp, Leadership in Training. It was an experience of young teens having more freedom to exercise and experience their gifts in an outdoor setting. I remembered this week the theme song of that camp time. There was a call and response of, we're going to learn about leadership. We're going to learn about leadership. And they would respond, leader, leader, ship, ship, ship. But the two verses that stuck with me as we learn about who we are and deepen into it were, and this demands good attitude, and this demands good attitude, ada, ada, to to to. How often have we been in a place where when we're struggling to find our way, we're looking to our leaders to encourage us and move us forward. This song is definitely not copyrighted. That the third verse lives in us as it lives in our church culture. The key to this is servanthood. The key to this is servanthood. Servant, servant, hood, hood, hood. There is an essence to this gift that it is about offering who we are to serve the community. We are trying to learn how to be leaders in this new time, not just as a church, but in the world. And writers and creatives and researchers are looking into what will help us deepen into leadership. <laughs> What's being written lately, particularly by Brene Brown in her book, Dare to Lead, is the invitation to embrace the suck, to embrace where it's hard and to be just where you are, moving forward a little bit at a time, but starting from where you are, not where you think you are or where you wish you were, but just in the midst of it. I can think of a number of stories of Jesus' leadership where he had to give up, at least for the moment, being responsible for what did and did not happen and to speak truth right into that moment. Kirk Byron Jones wrote about that in his book, Rest in the Storm. And so we're invited as we explore this gift to connect it always to this moment and this time. And the second piece that Brene wrote about is around self-awareness and self-love, that that matters for leadership, not that we're trying to be anybody else but ourselves. For mature leadership begins with the leader's capacity to take responsibility for their own emotional being and destiny. It begins 
with who you are. And who you are is how you lead. And daring leaders are aware of that place and who they are in relationship with. That they must care and be connected to the people they lead. We can all think and pay attention to nations and leaders in our world right now where the leaders are connected to the experience of the people and where those seem to be in ivory towers or places apart from what's really going on in their country. In the book, Lasting Leadership, Is It Possible? Well, the chapter in the book, Leaders Who Last, by Margaret Markison, one of my mentors, she writes, when leaders can combine a clear sense of who they are with a wise understanding of human relationships, ministry can prosper. Being a church leader is never easy, but it's easier when you focus on what you can control, yourself, and your response to others. We pay attention to that relationship that holds us together as the body of Christ. And lastly, what about the willingness to lead? Are we making space for people to develop and test their leadership gifts? When the gift that another gives is integral to who they are, we see them and know them and we make space. When it comes from a place that's really within them, we can see that gift thrive. It renews itself. It doesn't become a chore or work. It becomes the fuel of the Spirit empowering them to lead. And when we lead from the opposite place, from the place that depletes us, it not only takes away our gifts, but it can harm the community and harm others. Because it doesn't come from the original source of life. Parker Palmer writes about that in Let Your Whole Life Speak as he encourages people to navigate their own way of leadership, to find places in our world for it to grow. Let me cut to the chase. We have been exploring these spiritual gifts for over six weeks. It's been interesting. Perhaps it's brought some insight to you or shown you a gift you may have not noticed before. Maybe it's stemmed in you a curiosity or a wonder or allowed you to see through another's eyes. But it's one thing to be able to identify what your gifts are, to celebrate that or wonder when you would share them. But the other piece is when someone offers a gift, you in relationship with them, us as a community of faith or the body of Christ, do we make room to receive the gift? Do we look to recognize it when it doesn't look exactly the way it has before? If you're given the gift of encouragement, you're yearning for a place where the community can receive encouragement. It's one thing to be given the gift. It's another thing to receive the gift, to be led. How do we receive the gift of leadership? And how does that affect our entire community? Are we making space for people to lead and to lead as themselves, not who they think they should be or who has led before? Where and how do people test their gift of leadership? And can we as a community be open that there are different needs at different times? One writer uh, talks about the difference between a peacetime general and a wartime general. That in each season and time, there are gifts of leadership needed to be exercised in different ways. How do we make sure that we don't lean on certain leaders with certain gifts for too long? And may we embrace the practice of stepping back from leadership to allow and encourage others to lead. This comes full circle back to the words of Paul. The church has been wrestling with and trying to figure this out together for a long time. But each of us, 
was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. There is enough. There is enough to be shared. And in speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into Christ who is the head of the body and from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, it promotes the growth in building itself up in love. We give thanks for this spiritual gift of leadership. We recognize if people are exercising their gifts or actively receiving their gifts. The community is built up. The body of Christ is strengthened, and we will experience the renewing of our spirits. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join me as we pray together now. All things are born of you, God. We carry within us your light and your life. In the mystery of matter 
and deep in the cells of our souls are your longings for oneness, the oneness of the universe, vast and vibrating with the sound of its beginning. Give us attentive hearts, God, and lead us in your righteousness. Lead us in your oneness. Make your way plain before our eyes. Show us when to step up and when to step back. And as our lives become founded upon your word, may your word become a beacon to all we meet. Challenge us to do more than just sing and pray, God. Help us to shine with your light, that others may see you, that they may be led not by us, but by you at work through us. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together in the oneness of your eternal love. And help us to do these things following the way of Jesus, the peacemaker, as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And having just finished our first virtual rendezvous this week, our United Church Youth Gathering, let's look back at some previous rendezvous to see how our mission and service donations are supporting our youth living into their own leadership in training.
when you support mission and service, you support events like Rendezvous. It's so awesome to be able to have a glimpse of what's happening for those youth and young adults in our country who have gathered together and to know that the givings to the Mission and Service Fund are making a difference across our country for leadership. I am grateful for all the ways that you are contributing, not just to the ministry in our community, but beyond by placing offerings in the virtual offering plate on the website or e-transferring to office at islingtonunited.org or placing checks in the mail or the Narthex store. Thank you for supporting this work as we continue to reach out and do ministry in new ways. This week, if you haven't read your novel yet, Islington Reads is happening on the 18th of August, and we invite you to join us in the evening, and there will be some surprises and good conversation, and your voice is welcome at that table. I'm pretty sure there's over 60 people who have already read the book and are coming together online. More information for that's on the website. And during this time of worship, we've been holding space for the weekdays to be a time of rest. As the ending of August comes upon us, we want to savor this gift in the middle of the great pause to be enjoying the gifts of the summer and renewing our spirits for the work of the church to come. God has things in store for us in the fall. And for now, may you hear the call as we sing together our closing hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
stay with us just a little bit longer on the website and you can share the good news and pass the peace. But when you go from there, go surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ and may the Spirit find you empowered to lead and to be led. Go in peace. Amen.